Uh oh. Okay, we'll start with this. Another look at the controversial decision from last Wednesday's IBF bantamweight title fight as Miyo Yoshida's manager calls the judging the loss a disservice to the sport. The CompuBox statistics from Wednesday's women's bantamweight title fight and rematch between Miyo Yoshida and Sharita Metcalf clearly do not support the judges. Controversial 10-round UD in favor of Metcalf stated a press release sent to boxing scene on Friday by Sullivan Management. In an awkward, difficult-to-score fight featuring clashing styles, Metcalf was awarded the UD at the theater at MSG in New York City by scores of 99-91, 97-93, and 96-94, which the release described as dubious while citing the name of each judge with their respective scorecard. Another clear case of home cooking. From where I was sitting, it wasn't hard to score. A prolific jab from Miyo Yoshida all throughout the contest kept snapping Sharita Metcalf's head back. Sharita held her feet more in this fight, didn't move as much and tried for more punches, which kept her within range of Miyo Yoshida's jab, her combinations. The right outcome appeared clear, both in the surprise reactions of Metcalf's corner and also the thunderous objection from the crowd. The release continued as the scores were read, immediate objections ranked down through the arena as Yoshida and many ringside observers looked stunned. They were booing. They were booing the judge's decision. They were booing the idea that Sharita Metcalf did enough to win that fight. And by my count, that's the second time I've seen Sharita get a gift. She got one over Melissa Odessa Parker in a fight that she clearly should have lost. And once again, she got one with Miyo Yoshida. They're not booing because of what a great job Sharita Metcalf did. The right fighter sometimes still wins a controversial decision. And fighters, their teams, and their fans often react harshly to reasonable outcomes. Additionally, CompuBox statistics are a tool to better understand fights, but do not factor into official scoring. And in some cases, do not support a fairly rendered result. That said, Sullivan Management, which, if you hadn't learned by now, represents Yoshida, raises some interesting points. More from the press release, Yoshida finished the fight ahead 96-64 overall, 49-17 in jabs. She landed 49 jabs to Sharita Metcalf's 17, 30 body punches to Sharita Metcalf's 16, and 8-0-2 in a round-around breakdown of total connects, meaning that more often than not, Miyo Yoshida was outlanding Sharita Metcalf. So how could she have lost? The scoring criteria for scoring around. Effective aggression. Miyo was showing that. That's why she was landing more. Clean punches landed. Miyo was showing that. That's why she was landing more. Can hardly give Sharita Metcalf defense when she's the one getting hit more often than not. On what premise could you score that many rounds in favor of Sharita Metcalf? And what you can also cite that the announcers themselves on ProBox were calling the 99-91 scorecard absurd and noted that Hall of Fame boxing writer Thomas Hauser wrote for www.tssibtv that Sharita threw wild punches from long range all night. When she landed, it almost seemed by accident. The decision could have gone either way. I thought each fighter clearly won three rounds with four rounds up for grabs. 97-93 was a stretch. 99-91 re of being an agenda-driven scorecard. Because that's what it was. Yoshida's manager, Keith Sullivan, said, It is hard not to question the accuracy of the scoring. A 7-3 score is disturbingly extreme. The 9-1 score turned a world championship fight into a tragic farce. 
This was a disservice to the sport. And naturally, unless you have a rooting interest in Sharita, maybe that's your buddy, your pal, maybe she's from your home state. It's very clear that Miyo Yoshida should still be IBF champion. It could be argued that Yoshida came by the belt via equally controversial means, if not more so, after Metcalf beat her by UD last November, it was Yoshida, not Metcalf, who was awarded an immediate title shot a month later, taking the title from Ebony Bridges. What's controversial about that? What the author left out of this article, that Ebony Bridges was supposed to fight somebody else, but her opponent fell out, so they needed a late replacement. Enter Mio Yoshida, who ended up upsetting Ebony and winning the fight. I wouldn't call that controversial. It was an honor to once again share the ring with Sharita, Yoshida said after the fight. I felt I did more than enough to win the fight, and I don't understand why the judges awarded my opponent for throwing wild punches that never landed, and the few that did had no effect. In any case, the level of discontentment around the first two Yoshida Metcalf fights are likely to ensure a third, with the champion agreed to if the money's right. Immediately after Wednesday's fight, the problem is their careers are both handled by Lou DiBella, and Lou ain't got no money. The only reason this fight happened is because the IBF ordered it. Like so many fighters in a situation like this one, Sharita's gonna take the victory and run. It's unfortunate because you could see the improvements, the adjustments that Mio Yoshida made from the first fight to the second, clear as day, clearly outlanding Sharita Metcalf, just for her to get robbed. Nothing's gonna happen. Like when Devin Haney robbed Vasil Lomachenko, nothing's gonna happen here. It's not the first robbery in the sport of boxing, hardly the first, and won't be the last. It is what it is. And super middleweight news, I'm sure most of you have heard by now that Canelo Alvarez versus Chris Eubank Jr. preliminary talks have now started for the fight to potentially happen next. Ben Shalom is revealed, we've already started small conversations around the Canelo fight. If he's ever going to fight in the UK, that's the fight that would sell out Wembley Stadium. And don't forget that Preliminary talks already took place to potentially do the fight in America, but the numbers just didn't add up for Chris Eubank Jr. That he's used to receiving a certain amount of money in the UK, and in the US, it just wasn't worth his while, even if it's Canelo. What? I know how that sounds at first, but you have to consider that Chris Eubank Jr. is not in America, who he is in the United Kingdom. That Canelo versus Eubank Jr. is bigger, much bigger in the UK than it is in the US. I remember over a year ago, Canelo expressed an interest in fighting in the UK. It was initially thought that it would be Eddie Hearn that brings him to the United Kingdom. As it turns out, it might be Ben Shalom. It might be for this fight. Options are running dry in the United States as far as the super middleweight division. Anybody at or around super middleweight for those still holding out hope that Canelo Alvarez will fight David Benavidez. Well, David's en route to fight David Morrell. Remember? Whether or not you think Canelo wants that fight or he doesn't want that fight, he's running scared, he's ducking, however you want to slice it, David Benavidez is spoken for at this time. So this might be the fight that Canelo Alvarez has. This might be the one he does next. What do I think? I mean, I said it already. I said it before when those talks first kicked off. Chris Eubank Jr. is even more undeserving than Edgar Berlanga was. And being a fan of Canelo Alvarez doesn't change that. I've purchased several of Canelo Alvarez's pay-per-views over the years. I'm a fan of Canelo just as much as anybody else, but I ain't gonna pour sugar on shit just because it's Canelo. This is a poor choice. And if you're gonna try to excuse Chris Eubank Jr. as a potential opponent for Canelo, then what's your problem with Terrence? What the hell is supposed to make Chris more acceptable than Terrence? More deserving. I wanna preface everything I'm about to say with this. I think Canelo Alvarez knocks Terrence Crawford out, I do. If they were to make that fight, I'm confident Canelo stops him. But what I think is besides the point because that doesn't seem to be who he's fighting. Chris is supposed to be better? More deserving, more acceptable? Why? Why aren't Canelo's fans lambasting Chris Eubank Jr. as a clout chaser the way they are Terrence Crawford? Why aren't they accusing him of being just another guy that's showing up for a check the way they're accusing Terrence Crawford of showing up for a check? I don't understand. This is why I have to separate my forecast of a Canelo versus Crawford fight with Canelo's fans. I gotta keep them separate because it seems to me that Canelo's fans are afraid. They're scared. They must be. They've been attacking Terrence Crawford for months, tearing down Terrence Crawford for months for no 
other reason than his expressed interest in facing Canelo, and yet Chris Eubank Jr. expressed that same interest, and they don't attack him. They don't seem to have a problem with him, but they have a problem with Terrence. It's because you're scared. I don't think Terrence Crawford beats Canelo Alvarez. I gave him a fighting chance before, but based on what I saw in the Madrimov fight at 154, I don't think he can beat Canelo at 168. I don't, but you do. And that's why you're scared. That's why you've been bellyaching, complaining. For no other reason than Terrence wants to fight the guy. It's because he makes you nervous. Chris Eubank Jr. has never competed at the level of a Terrence Crawford. Doesn't have the career accolades of a Terrence Crawford. Is in no way, shape, or form as good a fighter as Terrence Crawford. And he is even less deserving than Terrence Crawford. Because Chris Eubank Jr. has never so much as sniffed a spot on the pound for pound list. Ever. And this is all right with you. You don't lay into Chris Eubank Jr. when he wants to fight Canelo Alvarez, but when it's Terrence Crawford, that bothers you? You say it's because Terrence would have to move up and wait, but Chris would have to move up and wait. He's been campaigning as a middleweight. What the hell's Chris done at super middleweight? Reynald Quinlan for the IBO title? A loss, a lopsided loss, a schooling, really, to George Groves in the first season of the World Boxing Super Series? You explain it. You tell me what makes Chris more deserving than Terrence. Don't try to hide behind Canelo and make it about Canelo because it's not actually about Canelo. It's about you. Why would Terrence Crawford wanting to fight Canelo bother you when Chris Eubank Jr. wanting to fight him doesn't bother you? Edgar wanting to fight him doesn't bother you, but this does? What, what, because nobody's gonna give Canelo credit for beating a Terrence Crawford? Not that many people are gonna give him credit for fighting Chris Eubank Jr. He already got knocked out by Liam Smith. You say Canelo would knock Terrence Crawford out? Knock Chris Eubank Jr. out, what's the difference? I still don't understand. What is your aversion to Terrence getting that opportunity instead of Chris? It's a bigger fight. Terrence Crawford versus Canelo Alvarez is a bigger fight in America, I think, than Canelo versus Eubank is in the UK. And in the UK, it's a decent sized fight. I'm not saying it isn't, but Terrence Crawford versus Canelo Alvarez in America combines two separate fan bases, two separate demographics, a fight between them would galvanize the boxing community at large enough, I think, to get this to a million buys. I think Canelo versus Crawford in America, if they made it, does at or around a million pay-per-view buys. At an American price point, we're not talking about 20 or 25 pounds in the UK. We're talking about $80 American. 80 to 90. Additionally, there is a separate report to the Chris Eubank Jr. report by way of Marcus saying that Canelo Alvarez is waiting on an Artur Betterbeev offer for a record-breaking fight. What? The website Izquierdazo.com revealed that the Russian agency TASS spoke with a member of Canelo's team who confirmed that the Mexican is interested in seeking a direct fight against Artur Betterbeev as soon as possible. It could be an interesting fight. We are waiting for an offer so that we can discuss the details the source told the Russian news agency anonymously. So an anonymous tip claims that the Russian agency TASS spoke with a member of Canelo's team. See, I find that hard to believe. If you told me that they spoke with Turkey LL Sheik, then I'd believe it. I'd believe it a little more because not that long ago, Eddie Hearn said that all systems are a go for a better B versus B ball rematch, and we all know who's paying for that. Turkey's paying for that, right? So if the goal is to put the pause button on that B-Ball rematch to instead make a fight with Canelo, one would assume that Canelo would speak to Turkey LL Sheik, not Toss, not anybody in Russia. Because for starters, Artur Betterbeef doesn't even really fight in Russia. He's not based out of Russia. He's based out of Canada. Has been for years. He's got a Canadian citizenship. His trainer, Mark Ramsey, is from Canada. I'm just not buying it. Now, if it were Dimitri Bivol that won the Better Beef fight, and he became that division's undisputed champion, I would sooner believe that Canelo would move up and wait for him than move up and wait for Artur, especially at a time when there's a separate report claiming that preliminary talks between Canelo and Chris Eubank have already started. I'm not buying this. We'll see. 
I'm not against the fight, if this rumor turns out to be true, if the story checks out and Canelo's interested in fighting Artur, why would I be against it? Canelo doesn't win. I'm a fan of Canelo Alvarez, but I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a fanboy. Canelo don't win that better be fight for the same reason Crawford don't win that Canelo fight. Weight classes exist for a reason, and as durable and as skilled as Canelo Alvarez has been for all these years, if you put him in the ring with Artur, Artur's gonna overpower him, Artur's gonna knock him out. Going up to 175, carrying that added weight on that small frame, people tend to forget Canelo is not a big guy, he doesn't have a big frame. That's why it's a wonder he's been able to accomplish all that he has been able to accomplish, but going back up to light heavyweight and carrying that added weight, remember, this guy gassed out with Dimitri Bivol. What do you think's gonna happen to him with Artur Betterbeef, who's a much bigger, much bigger puncher and more prolific and around, throws punches in bunches. Every moment you're not letting a shot go, he is. And I'm sorry to say, I don't think Canelo Alvarez can take it. I don't think he can absorb punches from this guy. It's a big train, little train situation. Both Canelo Alvarez and Artur Betterbeef have the same sweet spot. They're both very good mid-range to inside. But against Artur, Canelo is not dominating the pocket for all of his virtues and skills and shot selection. You just don't throw enough and you just don't hit hard enough. But didn't Dimitri Bivol say that Canelo Alvarez in some ways has more single punching power than Artur? I mean, didn't he say that immediately after the fight? No, what he said got lost in translation. That Canelo Alvarez puts more on a single punch than Artur because he loads up his punches where Artur doesn't have to. Everything Artur throws is heavy without him having to load up his punches. With him loading up his punches, he might punch a guy's head clean off his shoulders. That's what Dimitri was trying to communicate to Marcos Villegas that Canelo loads up on his punches where Artur does not. But if Artur did... Jesus Christ. Between the added weight of campaigning as a light heavyweight spread across that very small frame that Canelo's not that prolific in a round. He doesn't throw punches in bunches. And in a fight periodically, he takes the mid-rounds off. Can't do that with Artur. And don't talk to me about Canelo Alvarez's punching power. Canelo's a strong puncher at super middleweight. But he didn't knock out Jaime Munguia. He didn't knock out Edgar Berlanga, and everybody thought he was going to, but he didn't. He's not knocking out Artur. What are you trying to convince me of? I'm sorry to say that as big a fan of Canelo as I am, if these rumors are true, and he's serious about fighting this guy, he's gonna get knocked out. So maybe that's hard for you to imagine, but it was hard for a lot of people to imagine that Mike Tyson could lose to the likes of Buster Douglas. It was hard for a lot of people to imagine that Roy Jones Jr. would get slid under the ring by Antonio Tarver. It was hard for people to imagine that Anthony Joshua would get stopped by Andy Ruiz. This, however, this is not hard to imagine that Canelo would be biting off more than he could chew with Artur. That's not hard to imagine at all. You just don't want to accept reality. Then don't. But I ain't jumping off that cliff with you. If all all of this turns out to be true, Canelo's gonna get stopped for the first time in his career. Artois stops him. 